Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Nisha Menon Business Talks. As uh, you might already know, we talk in my channel about importing, exporting and also anything related to business and uh, you know I share my experience of uh, you know being in the business for the past 16 years. So today we're going to be discussing a very important topic, how to handle the customers that do not pay you. Especially during these times of uncertainty, which everybody is facing these days, you know. So I think this topic is going to be very important to you, whether you've been in a product based business or you've been in a service based business. So a very common practice in business when we run our you know, product based business or a service based business is to give credit to our customers. So it could be a 30 day credit, it could be a 60 day credit or it could even be a 90 day credit. And it depends on how long the customer has been with us and how strong the relationship has been between us and the customer and also how big the customer is as well. Because if suppose we are supplying to a big supermarket, then it would be a 90 day credit and we cannot say no in such circumstances, isn't it? And also, if suppose a customer has been with us for a very long time and they've been a very good customer for a very long time, then we might end up giving them a 30 day or a 60 day credit on a, you know, on a continuous basis as well. And when we give this, we have those good customers who have been with us for a very long time and they pay you on time as well. But you will have again those small percentage of your customers who are not paying you on time or who can be those bad customers where we put our you know time and effort in chasing them up and trying to get hold of the payment and we we seriously we will be wasting a lot of time around some of these customers so if you have been facing any of these situations then here are a few things of how to handle them so the very first step is to send them a email or a text or uh, even you know on whatsapp if you are with a copy of the invoice reminding them that the invoice is due and when the date is due as well and also tell them that the payment details are at the bottom of the invoice or even you can provide it separate as well if required and um, if they don't respond to you to your text or to your email the next step is to give them a call, you know, try to get them, get hold of them over the phone. And if they are a small business, what you can do is try to get into a higher authority. It could be the owner of the business or it could be the, you know, the director of the business, whoever it is that you need to get hold of them. If it's a bigger company, you might have to think of getting into the, uh, you know, the higher department, whoever is in charge of them or, you know, higher position and say that the invoice has been overdue and the payment is expected. So it, it could be in a friendly tone that you can say that, you know, this invoice is overdue and this is when you are expecting a payment as well. And it has been overdue for the last one week or two weeks or one month, whatever the, you know, the, con the, the kind of 30 day credit or 60 day credit you have given to them. And what will be helpful also is if you can give them a, due date again saying that you know if you could pay by the next week or if you could pay by the 20th of this month then that'd be really helpful so just give them a specific date as well rather than keeping it very open over the phone so that's the next step that you could do and as you know these days everybody is facing cash flow issues so if you feel that, you know, the customer is facing a cash flow issue in a genuine way or if the customer is saying that, oh, we can't pay you because we are we are having serious cash flow issues, then what you could do is you could offer them a payment plan. You know, you can say that, OK, let's do one thing. Let's you don't have to pay me. Let's say they owe, they owe you like two thousand pounds or something for an invoice. You can say, OK, uh, you know, would you be able to pay me two hundred and fifty pounds every week? Or would you be able to pay me 500 pounds every week? So put like a payment plan so that you can split up the payment into smaller bite sized chunks that the customer can afford. So that again, so that they don't have any excuse not to pay you as well. That's something which you could offer. So plan, you know, something around the customer's, I would say the financial conditions and say that this is something which we can help you out because it helps in your cash flow and their cash flow as well. If there is still no response from them that they have not been cooperating with you at all, then you will have to go for the final step, which is the debt collecting agency. 
again you will have to say that you know i am going ahead with the debt collecting agency because i am left with no other option and then my cash flow is being affected as well and you try to tell them that you know you have been as supportive as possible and you want their business you want the relationship with the customer as well so you would be trying to show them how supportive you have been as well throughout and tell them that you are left with no other option but you have to go ahead with a debt collecting agency and one thing to keep in mind whatever steps you do what i highly recommend is again i'm talking this from experience what i highly recommend is keep documentation and evidences of all the steps you have taken whether it's a whatsapp message whether it's a, a you know a, even a phone call i would say if you can record your your conversations as well or if the whatsapp conversation whatsapp voice notes which you have or emails which you have been sending them because if you are going ahead with a debt collecting agency then you would need to provide evidence of what are the steps that you have taken to chase up this customer and what are the responses that they have given you as well so you would need to document all those kind of things so that's a final thing that which i wanted to say if you are coming across these situations now let's say you haven't faced that situations yet then good for you i would say you know if you haven't faced any such bad customers then that's a very very good thing so how do we stop this or how do we come across you know how do we avoid such situations in the future the first recommendation would be to try and get upfront payment because if you can get upfront payment from the customers then you will not have to face such situations at all and especially in this time of uncertainty and financial crisis which every small business is facing it would be good if you can get upfront payment from your customers as much as possible if it's not even 100% at least if you can get 50% advance payment and the rest 50% when the goods are delivered or something like that you can keep a payment plan as well then you would not be you know coming across that situation where you have to chase up the payment from these customers especially if you have been making any bespoke products or if you have been making any products that is specifically requested by these customers then do not be afraid to ask for the upfront payment or at least 50% of the payment to secure that deal because you know the customer can change their mind any time and you have been making this product for especially for them and if they change their mind then you will not be able to sell the product to anybody else so you should not be thinking twice or you should not be thinking it's rude to ask payment up front because when you think about it you might have su suppliers whom you are buying products from where you have to pay up front so they are not worried about asking you and you pay them in up front you know for manufacturing for us in india in our factory we have to pay up front for the coconut for all the vegetables and all the ingredients that we use for our samosas all the vegetable products they have to pay up front so again still we keep the relationship with them because that's how it goes so you should not think you know that it is rude to ask payment in upfront then the next thing what you could do is uh, you know if you have the second step what i usually do for my customers uh, these times is you send an invoice straight away as soon as the goods are delivered i even put reminders on my calendar so, so let's say the goods have been ordered last week and we are sending it this week so what i do is as soon as the goods are delivered i put a reminder if it's delivered this friday i put a reminder for sending them an invoice on that day so that if you send the goods you know and the invoice together at the same time then it will be on the top of their list and it will also be in their reminder as well you know that okay the goods this goods has been delivered and this invoice has been received for them as well it's easy to look and match the product delivered and the invoice that you've received if you use any software like zero or cookbooks or sage or any accounting software you can use them for sending the invoices and the other thing by using the software the good thing is that you can even put recurring reminders you know for chasing up the payment so you manually do not have to sit and chase up the payments or the invoices from these customers so zero will automatically send a reminder when the payment is due if you say 30 days they will send a reminder to the customer as a recurring reminder as well so that's a good thing if you use any software like zero or quickbooks 
The third way, how you can avoid getting into this, uh, you know, the late payment scenario is you can offer your customers early payment discounts or even late payment charges. So these are the two ways. So if you tell your customer, let's say their customer, their, their invoice is due by 30 days, you know, so you would tell them if you pay me within 15 days, then you would get a 2% discount from the invoice amount or something like that. Or if you pay after 30 days, like if you pay, you know, within 45 days, then you would face a late payment charges or an arrears charges of again another two percent or five percent or something like that so that's how you try to you know make the customer pay on time as well and this early payment discount actually works because it encourages them to save some money and you get the money as well so you just have a minimal minimal discount or you know something you could do there and few couple of other things that you need to keep in mind is as well you need to, you know, raise a purchase order whenever the customer places an order. So even if he says that I'll place the order over the phone or over WhatsApp, I would highly, highly recommend you get a purchase order because I have faced this, you know, we used to have a relationship with, a, with one of our customers and then he just verbally said, that, okay, uh, you know, we are going to be placing this order, but he ended up not paying me and then he said when I went to the debt collecting agency he said oh actually we didn't uh, you know order any stuff from them. So one thing that I learned from that was you need to raise a purchase order whatever relationship you have with their customers and also you need to give a delivery note to show the proof that you have delivered the goods and they would be signing the delivery note as well. So these are the two other things that you need to keep in mind. Get a purchase order for every uh, you know order that you get and you send them an invoice and you also provide them with a delivery note. So these are the three things purchase order, invoice and delivery note. And finally if possible if you're getting any big contracts get a written contract in place. Again, as you know, I share everything and learnings, everything from my personal experience, okay? So 2019 for Jackfruit, our biggest contract was, I wouldn't say contract, but our biggest customer was with uh, TGIF and Frankie and Benny's and they used to order tons and tons of Jackfruit from us actually. But we COVID hit and, uh, you know, they had to shut down their factories and uh, I was I was stuck with 10 tons of jackfruit. So which was one of the biggest, biggest challenges I faced in 2020. That was a time when I realized I should have had a written contract in place because obviously it's not their fault. It's not my fault either that COVID had happened and they, you know, the, the whole food service sector was affected. But you always should have a written contract in place, especially when you are getting big big orders from uh, you know big companies and if none of the above works then obviously we go for the option which we discussed in the uh, you know in the beginning of this video which is you go with the debt collecting agency so you know that is the last and the final option and uh, what I did was uh, there are many debt collecting agencies out there. So you just search, uh, you know, for debt collecting agencies, UK or London. And um, usually the pattern is what they would do is they would charge you a small minimal upfront fee and then they would take a percentage of the money they have collected as well. So because they are professionals, they know how to do this and they even knock on their doors and try to get the money from these customers. So that would be the last option where you can try and get money from, um, you know, unpaid customers. So that's it for today. So, uh, you know, I just want to share these with you uh, because uh, I thought this would be quite imp important to improve the cash flow of your business. And I hope you found these uh, tips uh, helpful and I hope you follow these as well so that, uh, you know, your cash flow is not affected, especially during these uh, uncertain times. So I'll come with another useful topic in my next video. So please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and like and comment and let me know what are the other methods that has helped you in your cash flow for your business or if any other methods has uh, you know you have used for chasing up your customers or if you have faced anything else in your business do comment it in the uh, in the video and you know let's share and build up our community as well so look forward to hearing from you soon and i'll see you in my next video until then take care bye bye